the X570 AORS Extreme Motherboard. And I get to do a build in it. Yes, I'm very excited for this motherboard for a few reasons. It's one I've been wanting since um, the X570 chipset and lineup was announced. Not just because it happens to be uh, the top of the line motherboard for X570 that uh, the Gigabyte AORUS line offers, um, and also not just because it's one of the few, if not I think, believe one of two motherboards out there that have passive cooling on the chipset. Um, and it's also not just because it's one of the ones that's one of the few that's able to handle the Ryzen 9 3950X uh, processor, which is what is going to be used on said motherboard. Um, it's also got to do with a little bit that uh, Gigabyte has finally revamped their BIOS. Um, and I'm really excited to use it. I'm excited to use to see what the features are like within it and uh, see overall how this motherboard handles uh, such a high-end processor as the 3950X. Obviously not all brother, motherboards out there or motherboards. Hmm. Issues today apparently. I'm not, obviously not all of the motherboards out there can handle uh, the power consumption and the uh, cooling necessary for uh, some of the higher end Ryzen processors. I think it's also really exciting that there are finally, and there, as there has been for the past, I don't know, what, eight months or whatever it was since this, uh, these newer Ryzen series processors have been announced, but there's excitement around this uh, chipset lineup, the uh, processors themselves, because of the fact that they demand higher end uh, components and that have attention to detail and just are a higher quality than they have been in the past for the AMD offering. Um, AMD, man, they're just doing such a great job right now and, and they're taking market share from Intel. I'm not gonna get into all of that, but uh, if you want to, you're more than welcome to go out and take a look at the stock market and, and shareholders uh, reports and such. But uh, I think they're finally giving Intel a run for their money and it's demanding better components for those processors. So this is the one that uh, I've been wanting for a while. Um, came partially as a gift from my uh, wife uh, for Christmas, and uh, I get to use it. So let's open up the box, take a look at uh, some of the features of it, and then after we get done with that, um, we're gonna talk about what I'm going to do for a build using this. Uh, and I'm going to want some input from you. So here we go. Um, The unboxing of the X570 AORUS Extreme. Yes, it is uh, Ryzen 3000 desktop ready, and it has the X570 chips up as the uh, name suggests. When you open it up, you are greeted by the motherboard and a saying, team up, fight on. Sounds, oh, I don't know, aggressive but maybe that's what they stand for. They stand for aggression and winning and dominance. Let's go. And you have this beautiful motherboard that appears to be sitting in a very nicely constructed carton, well protected and with uh, plastic all over the place. Hmm. We are gonna put this aside for a moment, come right back to that, see what's in the box. Sticker sheet, um, not that I'm gonna use this, but I'm, some of you might, but regardless, this sticker sheet, put that off to the side. And box on the right says it is the Aorus RGB Fan Commander. This is interesting, let's open this up. Nice box. And here's what we got. This is the uh, control hub for the RGB Fusion uh, Gigabyte or AORUS Commander. So kind of like a Commander Pro, if you will, from uh, Corsair. I guess not quite the same thing, but similar. And then within here, you're gonna have a bunch of cables. Looks like you've got, okay, these are the 
RGB cables needed for the commander. I'm assuming that's what all the stuff is in here is commander essential. So you have uh, okay, another connector. And a set of RGB connectors again. I'll have to see what's in the box. I'm not sure what that is. Oh yeah, some more connectors. And we have SATA power and it's braided. That's a nice cable. Oh, and look at this, some uh, Velcro straps. So nicely done Gigabyte with uh, the included items being of seemingly high quality. Let's put this back together. And in box number two, pull that out. Box number two is, I'm assuming, the rest of our accessories for the motherboard. Oh, yep. Instructions, necessary. Um, oh, RGB fan commander instructions. That'll be useful, I'm sure. Installation guide in case you don't know how to install a motherboard, which I suppose some people don't, so I shouldn't say anything disparaging there. And some more accessories. So it looks like we have our antenna, which is going to be necessary for the Wi-Fi. Oh, look, they gave us two of them. Hmm, that's interesting. Two antennas. The individual. Ah, they are in two individual antennas. That's very nice. The uh, Asus ones I have is uh, a single antenna with uh, two connectors. So, I mean, oh, some more. Velcro straps, very nicely done. And we have some SATA power for, oh, the commander, okay. Screws. Stop, oh, now that's nicely done. A flash drive for the software, as opposed to a di disc. Very nicely done, Aorus, I like that. And then looks like we just have the rest of our cabling in here. And some of these are even braided cables. Look at that. The SATA cable is not just simple plastic. It is actually a similar to a cable mod uh, SATA cable. That is very nicely done. That kind of money, I suppose you should get higher end. And looks like that's what they all are. Huh. That's awesome. RGB. Front connector. All right. Oh. What in the world we got here? Oh, a sound connector. Very interesting. Okay. And then what is this? A metallic badge. Very nice as well. Nicely done. So simple and clean components uh, or accessories kit, I should say, for the motherboard. I like it. But now let's get to the important stuff. All right, I've got the motherboard out of its box, peeled off the plastic, which was miserable to do, to do for whatever reason. It was really stuck and didn't want to come off clean, so I didn't bore you with my uh, failed attempt at doing a nice clean peel. So anyway, a brief overview of the uh, connections on this motherboard uh, before we divide, dive into the rest of this uh, video here. Uh, first off, it does have two 8-pin um, ATX for the 12 volt. That is awesome. Should deliver some nice clean power to the motherboard, especially considering this has a 16-phase VRM delivery. Um, that is going to be or should be awesome, uh, especially when using a a processor such as the 3900X or the 3950X, like what we'll be using in this case. Get your CPU optional and CPU fan header up here, along with a couple of RGB, RGB and your digital RGB, your power and reset, nice solid buttons. Uh, I like that. Uh, very clean look overall. You do have, um, I'm gonna come down here real quick before we get onto the side here. You do have your um, BIOS switch. Obviously you've got dual BIOS option here. And then, um, you know, if you want to be able to have them both running in case of backup, you've got your QLED readout here, which is really nice in the event of you having a code. Um, should make for a quick readout. I really like, we're gonna move to the side here, how they have this laid out. I, I think that this is fantastic. Uh, no pun intended because there's no fan on the chipset here. You have your side facing uh, 24 pin connector as opposed to on top. So now as opposed to having to curl it up and plug it in, we can just plug it in straight and have a nice clean 
run for our 24 pin. I love that. You have a bunch of uh, fan pump connectors. So the top two are actually your pump connectors and then you've got uh, three fan headers right below it, which is awesome. If you're front pan, you've got a uh, front fan header, I'm sorry, you have another uh, RGB and then another digital RGB connector right here. Um, you get into your SATAs, obviously pretty generic, right? And you've got your uh, USB uh, connector here, 3.0 front panels here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then uh, you've got your three additional uh, PCIe Express slots that happen to be Gen 4. So we will get that higher bandwidth and you know, that's a, a main reason for going to this. If you think you're gonna be able to actually utilize uh, the higher bandwidth option offered from the PCIe uh, Gen 4, obviously not really utilizing it yet in graphics cards, we're not even using up all the bandwidth in Gen 3. However, it could be used going forward for that, but more importantly, you can use it on your um, M.2 NVMe drives and take advantage of that data transfer. So on the back, we're gonna come here and you've got your CMOS reset, which is really nice to have right on the back of the button, uh, back of the uh, IO shield. So you don't have to deal with, you know, peeling out the battery and all that stuff in order just to set your, or reset your uh, CMOS. You get your Q flash, so you can actually flash your BIOS from right here by sticking your, um, flash drive that has the BIOS file loaded on it already. Right here, you just have motherboard hooked up power, press and hold this, it'll do its thing. It's fan, it's awesome. Some USB 2.0 headers, you've got your USB 3.0 and 3.1 headers, which are, you know, plentiful if you will. You have your generic one gig LAN, and then you have your 10G Aquantia LAN, which that is awesome because now you can get some serious throughput, uh, throughput there if you're doing some in-house networking. You do have a USB uh, Type-C uh, connector right here, and then your audio um, at the bottom. Another thing I really liked about this motherboard is the um, back shield. It is very nicely done, very sturdy, uh, very stiff, um, very clean looking. Not that anyone really sees the back of the motherboard all that often, uh, but however, that is there. Now, one of the main features of this motherboard is the fact that there is no fan for the chipsets. One of the pa few ca passive cooling ones out there. Well, how they are able to accomplish that using my fan, my awesome, uh, oops, I fix it toolkit that my uh, wife got me. Um, under here is this massive P heat pipe that runs from the uh, fin stack for the VRMs and comes down to the chipset. Okay, I took off the uh, NVMe uh, drive covers, if you will. Point out, you do have three of them and they will support your NVMe Gen 4 drives. So higher uh, um, data transfer speeds now available due to the PI PCIe, uh, PCIe Gen 4 uh, capability of the uh, chipset and the uh, Ryzen processors. Uh, obviously here goes that heat pipe down here covering the chipset. What's nice on these is they obviously, like everybody else seems to be doing now on their better motherboards, you do have your thermal interface or so your heat um, dissipation now available for your uh, NVMe drives. And then on the back of this, you have two more so that you have full thermal dissipation for all three of your NVMEs. Another thing I thought was kind of interesting is you pull this off here if you want to have access to an additional um, supplemental power supply. And this is to supplement the power for your graphics cards in the event. And the instructions say that if you want to have two or more, they suggest you use this as it will deliver more clean, stable power. You also have um, your TPM plug as well as your front audio plug right here. Now if you're not using those, I like that. Looks clean. Nothing exciting but still looks very clean. So let's get this put back together. 
uh, talk about some of the additional features of this and then get on to uh, what we're going to try to accomplish with a build in, in this or using this motherboard. Okay, so those are some of the features that really make this motherboard appealing and why I was so excited to build with it. Now, trying to figure out exactly what I want to do for components and the number one thing I'm having the hardest time deciding on, which will include the rest of the components, is the chassis. I have two currently, and I'm just going to use one of them. I don't have a need or a desire to go and order another chassis at the moment. Uh, I will tell you, I wish that the Inwin 928 was available for purchase. I want to build something in that so badly that would, that super tower is just amazing to me. I love how they have that layout done. I've watched some people build in it. I like what they've done with it. I like the fact that it comes with those AC uh, 140 crown. I believe it's like 16 of those fans uh, and how they daisy chain together. So just eliminating so many needs for wires. Off of that, those are the fans I'm going to be using in whatever build I decide. So either if I do uh, the one chassis, which is I have an Evolve X and part of the reason why I want to use that case that I've had for a long time is um, Fantex did release their Glacier D140 distro plate. And I really want to use this thing. And you'll understand why, what my conflict is here in a moment. Um, this requires a rear fan capable 140 slot. The other chassis I want to potentially use that I have as well is uh, does not have the capability of using uh, 140 fans in the rear. So that is an item that I really do want to use at some point. I will do a build in that uh, Evolve X case, whether it's with this um, motherboard and setup is yet to be seen. Using that chassis, I would then use the Crown um, AC140 fans. Because they're daisy chainable, they do supply good um, aesthetic pressure, uh, and their RGB is supposed to be nice and clean. Uh, and eliminating a lot of those wires. That's a big reason why I'm excited about using those fans. Typically, I do use Noctua industrial fans because they're black, so real nice and neutral. They're not that ugly. Um, brown, I'll use typically the Halo Lux uh, RGB solution. So I get that on there. And they're just the best fans out there. The negatives, so many dang wires. And that's the main reason I'm not using Noctua fans in this is because of lack of RGB in implementation, which I do want to use in this build. Uh, and just the amount of ungodly wires I'd have to have in order to implement uh, said uh, setup. So I'm trying to decide if I want to use that or not. The other case I have is the Inwin 925. That one is really a 120 a millimeter fan support case. So that's where my challenge comes in, is I can put the 120s around the whole case, and I'll show you that here. Um, but I wouldn't be able to use my distro plate. I know that sounds minor, but it, it's something I really want to try to use. Um, that should supply a very nice clean build as well. However, my challenge in that one is what size radiators will I be able to use with regards to thickness to um, use this? I really like Hardware Labs radiators. I do have some uh, of the new um, Hydrex series radiators from uh, Corsair that I plan to use one way or another. Um, and it, why I like those is because they were designed uh, in uh, agreement with hi Hardware Labs. They help design those radiators. And I just think that, that personally, I feel like they're the better radiators on the market right now. Um, and they've worked for me in the past. And I guess I'm just kind of a creature of habit using what I know works and those I know work. However, it's the thickness of the rad that I'm not sure that what I'll be able to use in there. And this processor, the 3950X, will need some good healing or healing, hopefully no healing. I hope it's not broken. Heating, yes, I've got issues today. Heating, oh my God, cooling due to the heat provided. What in the world? Anyway, based on that, here's my other dilemma, is do I use the uh, Corsair Hydrex series um, 
the uh, XC7 water block, or do I use, which is really what I'm planning on doing, the Optimus one that I got from uh, Matt at Performance PCs. Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate it. This thing is awesome. It's nice and clean. It's supposed to provide really high flow uh, across the uh, CPU die. And these Optimus uh, blocks are really gaining a really good reputation. First one I've, uh, I've had and I'm going to be using it. And you'll notice that this is uh, using a black uh, plate. I'm going to do more of a darker theme on this build. My fittings, which I know I'm going to use, are going to be the Alpha Cool um, 13 millimeter brass fittings. They're black, but they're made for brass tubing. And I'm going to use those um, because they really clamp nicely. And I got a bunch from Alpha Cool when um, they were helping me when my uh, dog Kyle decided to have a snack on my existing fittings. Long story, you can see previous video for that. So that's what uh, I'm planning on using. Now, graphics card, I have my EVGA RTX 2080 Super for the Win 3 Ultra graphics card. And we all know how I feel about that naming scheme. That's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be uh, water cooling that as well. Challenge I have. What water block do I use? At the moment, I'm looking at EK's Quantum Series um, our RGB addressable um, block for that card. Uh, I do have a Seasonic. Um, I think it's called their Prime Titanium uh, series. It's a 1000 watt uh, PSU that I'm going to use, as well as some um, cable mod custom cables. And you can see here what I'm thinking about doing. Again, more of that darker theme. And they have those really nice um, uh, paracord and their, their uh, nylon cables now, along with they use their, uh, uh, on the Pro Mods, you can use the um, aluminum cable combs uh, to match everything and just it look really high end. I've used them, I think they're an awesome setup. So that's kind of my thinking. I do have a um, Gen 4 uh, M.2 on the way. I'm gonna use a Fire Cuda 2 terabyte. Try that out, see how that works out and then kind of go from there. So that's my thought. I would like your input. What do you think I should use for the case? N1925 or the Evolve X? Those are my two options. I'm not doing anything else because I'm not buying it. Unless someone wants to buy the case for me and send it to me, send it to me and I'll use that. Happy to do a sponsored vid. But I don't really have any sponsors uh, at this moment. Just, you know, some help here and there. Again, thank you to uh, Matt at Performance PCs. Huge, huge thanks for the, sending me that water block. Um, but those are my two options. So that's what I need some help with. And again, I need help with um, the water block to use for the GPU. That's what we got. So hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button for me. As you know, it really does help my channel. If you didn't, hit that thumbs down. Hopefully it's not that. Leave your comments below. Please hit that subscribe button for me as that does have my, uh, helps my channel to grow big time. And thank you much. We'll see you next week.